So Alex Jones covered Trump's Syria bombing live on the night that it happened. And his reaction is getting quite a bit of press. You know, stop supporting Trump. And it's the opposite of what my ex-wife says. She says, you know, oh, the system took the kids away from me. No, you got the kids back because of who I was part of the time. And then they sit there and they're like, you know, if you just turn against Trump, things will be better. But he was doing good, and that what makes it so bad. Oh, and that's what makes it so bad. If he'd have been a piece of crap from the beginning, it would be so bad. But we made so many sacrifices, and now he's crapping all over us. It makes me sick. So I'm happy that he's against the bombing. Let me just say that right up front and get that out of the way. I am. I'm happy he's against the bombing. I want anybody and everybody uh, to be against this bombing and stand up against it and make arguments against it and all that stuff. Now, he might not be against it for the exact right reasons, but listen, I'll take it either way. You know, I don't I wouldn't care if he came out in favor of a living wage for the wrong reasons or whatever. Uh, whatever the issue is, as long as you're on the proper side of the issue. OK, I'll take it. So I'm happy he did that. Uh, and there are people who make fun of him over this because he's crying. It is kind of funny. I mean, keep it real. Um, but the thing that just drives me fucking nuts is I don't... Like, this was the thing of all the things. Because even if you say, okay, well, Alex's thing is obviously war. And he doesn't like it when a, a president acts hawkish. Whether it's Democrats or Republicans. And see, he's taking a principled stand. This is a good example of him doing it right here. But... Alex, there's been like a thousand reports to this point of, for example, Trump going back on his word about Iraq and we're staying in Iraq. That's just one example. Another example is Afghanistan. Now, you go back through Trump's Twitter feed, you know, before he was president, it was just nonstop, wall to wall. Like, what are we doing? Why are we wasting money in these stupid wars overseas? We should take that money and reinvest in our own country. That's what we should do. Why are we, you know... Why are we at, in these places when these people hate us anyway? It doesn't make any sense. And it was just wall to wall. Hey, let's get out. Let's, you know, America first and all that stuff. And then when he got in office, it was immediate. Okay, we're going to stay in Afghanistan. We're, uh, we're going to stay in Iraq. Even on the issue of Syria, yes, this was a direct escalation because it was, first of all, it was bombing the Syrian capital. Second of all, it was a direct bombing of, you know, the government. Whereas before, the times we attacked the government, uh, one time it was a, a, an airbase, but most of the time it was, oh, we hit their affiliated forces. So not the Syrian government, but people who were fighting on the side of the Syrian government. This is a direct escalation because you're bombing the capital and you're bombing the government. So it is an escalation, but Alex, we just cover the story here on Secular Talk maybe a month and a half ago about how they announced we're staying in the U in uh, Syria indefinitely. So we're already there. We've already been funding the rebels, propping up the rebels, who, by the way, the, the majority of them are jihadists. Okay, we're ar arming them and funding them directly. We're arming them and funding them through Saudi Arabia. We've actually on both sides of the conflict because there was the story from the LA Times a while ago about how Pentagon backed rebels are fighting CIA backed rebels so we're on both sides of the conflict in one respect but on the other hand the overwhelming majority of the support goes to the rebels we've been doing uh, you know air raids there and never mind the fact that we're doing eight different bombings in eight different countries some countries it's just drones some it's airstrikes then you have Iraq and Afghanistan where there's still boots on the ground if you will so there's also been the giant increase in the drone war. What is it? 426% increase in drone strikes. He already surpassed, Trump already surpassed Obama's uh, civilian death rate, which is wild because Obama 90% of the time got the wrong people with drones. Trump, I, I don't know if, what happened with that percentage, but I do know that as a raw number, he has, he's already killed more civilians than Obama did with drones in his whole time in office. So, Alex, there's already just, just a giant mountain of evidence that even if you say, okay, the thing that, the straw that broke the camel's back is that Trump decided to be hawkish. 
Well, where the fuck were you? From day one, he was hawkish. The very first thing, uh, the very first military move Trump made as president uh, killed an eight-year-old American girl in a botched raid. It was a raid that has su had such flimsy evidence that President Obama was like, no, we're not going to do it because we're going to fuck this up. Trump was like, yeah, I don't really care. Go ahead and do it. And then there was also the story we just covered on the last show about how uh, CIA operatives, you know, those guys who are certainly not sticklers for civilian lives to protect them, they went to Trump and said, oh, by the way, we did this bombing and we waited because there were civilians in the house, so we waited for them to leave so that before we did the bombing. And Trump said, why did you wait? So, in other words, Alex, even if your philosophy really is and your principle in this respect, I don't want a hawkish president. I don't want that. Well, then where the fuck were you? Trump's been in office over a year, and he's been hawkish from what, the first week? Story after story after story where he's escalating in all these different conflicts. And I get it, on the campaign trail, half the time, he was non-interventionist. But just like with Obama, he did the non-interventionist rhetoric, and then when he got in office, he wasn't non-interventionist. So, and I was consistent and objective in calling Obama out every step of the way, because I'm not a hack. You, Alex, it took you over a year <laughs> to realize, oh shit, it looks like he's hawkish. Yeah, motherfucker! Your head's been so far up your ass talking about gay frogs that you don't even realize that he's been hawkish from the very beginning. So that's the thing I don't get. Again, I'll give him credit for coming out against this bombing because good, you should, and a lot of people on the right did, and I'm happy that they did that, and I'm giving them credit, okay? But at the same time, like, pay attention. Come on, you're dragging so far behind. And it's not just this issue. I mean, this is an issue where he says he's against war, and this is an instance where he's, be he's standing up and saying, okay, fine, I I'm against this bombing. But you should have been against all the other ones. You should have been against all the other escalations, and there's been countless escalations. There's no doubt about that. And also, this idea that like, oh, well, Trump was doing so well, he was, or he was fighting the deep state to this point, that's just not true, Alex. This is a guy who on the campaign trail railed against Wall Street, railed against Goldman Sachs, called Ted Cruz and Jeb Bush their puppet, and he was right, called Hillary Clinton their puppet, and he was right. And then he gets in there and his first move is like, okay, bring me all the Goldman Sachs people you got, because I'm going to appoint Goldman Sachs all throughout my administration. Of course, he had Gary Cohn, who was an economic advisor. He had Steve Mnuchin, has Steve Mnuchin, who's Treasury Secretary. These guys crafted a tax bill that was 100% geared towards cutting corporate taxes. They're already paying a historic low percentage of the tax burden, and they cut it even more. You know, it was a, nothing but a giant gift to Wall Street. They gutted the estate tax, which only applies to fucking people with estates, which is the richest of the richest of the rich. It was, now it's like $11 million or more you have to have in net worth before the fucking uh, estate tax hit, hits you. So this is nothing but a giant giveaway. Trump said at Mar-a-Lago, with all of his rich buddies around him after the passage of this tax bill, you guys just got a lot richer, you know what I'm saying? So here's a guy who's totally sold out the common man and working people for the interests of elites, and he's done it repeatedly, and Alex Jones was fucking nowhere to be found on that, and he said Trump was doing pretty good. It's just that either Alex Jones is a liar, or he was sold this image, and he just held on to this image like an infant, like an infant, and was like, no, my daddy's good, and I'm gonna think of my daddy as being good and doing good, and then... Oh, fine, this is the one thing, a year in, uh, more than a year of just fucking garbage policies that help the rich and exacerbate income inequality and do more war. I mean, now Donald Trump is the establishment. He's the establishment on steroids. That's why he put fucking neocon John Bolton is in, his, in his administration. That's why he has Wall Street throughout his administration. So in other words, the guy's a fraud, the guy's a fake, there's been mountains of evidence for, uh, about it from day one, and Alex Jones has nothing to say. I guess finally the straw that broke the camel's back was the Syria bombing. But, dude, I mean, come on. Wake up. I, every time I say, every time I say uh, Syria, Siri kicks in. Bitch, I said Syria. God damn it. That happens every show. <laughs> every goddamn show that happens. But anyway, um... Yeah, I'm happy he's against the bombing, but wake the fuck up, man. Wake up, wake up. I mean, I don't... How do you not see it? Because he follows politics every day. You should see the stack of articles he has on his desk on any given show. It's like, well, apparently you're not fucking reading them, because if you were reading them, you wouldn't be defending Trump 
all the way up until this point. But having said that, I hope you continue to rail against him now because he's not anti-establishment. He is the establishment. Even though he railed against Hillary Clinton, and I grant you, she's the establishment too, no doubt. I I've always said this. In Trump's heart of hearts, he wants to be Hillary Clinton. Why? Because nobody is more accepted in elite establishment circles than Hillary Clinton. Like, she is the ultimate example of, you know, somebody that gets nothing but fawning adoration at those cocktail parties with Wall Street executives and military industrial complex CEOs and all that. Like, that's what she is. And in Trump's heart of hearts, that's all he wants, is the approval of the in-crowd, the popular people. So even though he rails against those people, oftentimes with his rhetoric, he's really just like a spurned lover. He's like, why don't you guys love me? I'm doing everything you want. I'm bombing all these countries. I'm giving all the money to the rich. Why don't you love me? So all he wants is to be part of the, the cool kids crew, which is the elites in the U.S. in his mind. Um, and all of his policies show that. And it's time that you wake up and realize Donald Trump wishes he was Hillary Clinton. He's trying everything in his power to be her.